Welcome, welcome, welcome to the second game in the most recent Tomb Raider franchise trilogy. Rise of the Tomb Raider. Greetings. Now, Rise of the Tomb Raider made a I need more wood for the fire. yeah a couple differences to the previous one. So you had a bit more open areas for this section, of course. You had a story that was a bit more, honestly, more farcical, <laughs> magical, more magical. Yeah. You had less of a, uh, I suppose, world opening up by traversal. This it does open up a little bit, but it's a lot less than the first game. The first game you tread over similar areas but you go back with different equipment and you could go to new areas and it was that kind of repetition. This one you sort of, you do progress through. So there's not, you can backtrack, but there's not a huge amount of it. Uh, the UI is improved. Um, in some ways. And, you know, less than others. So we've got, uh, we've got our law stuff. Uh, map legend, I want to zoom out. There we go. So you have your progressing through areas from the start. So this is, you start in the snow, you get to the forest, you go into this crazy place with a giant castle thing and it makes no sense. But that's fine. It's fine. The bad guys can get there in about two seconds. They just drill a hole as per usual. Our graphics are improved, naturally. But it's still the same style with the the weapons and the, the bow and you still have, you have crafting and it's got a really I think it's got one of the best introductions in the trilogy because you start out you're in the in the snow you're in the wild and you've got to get ready to fight a bear so you got to get everything you can so you're ready you got to get ready to kill it and beat it in a boss battle which I think is a great start Laura, I'm sorry if Sophia was less than welcoming and you have Jesus. I understand. I'm just glad you were there to vouch for me. My people have spent decades fighting outsiders. Oh. It's not an easy habit to break. See if you can Tent lend a hand with the A little hard work would go a long way towards building trust. I'll see what I can do. So this isn't my save where I beat the game. This is the one earlier on. Because I thought it'd be nicer to show it. And because you can't really... You don't really go back. It's not really that sort of game. But you have, you know, your giant icons. You have your ridiculously high jumping ability. But yeah, so what's the, the main difference? Is really from a story perspective, it's just significantly more uh, magical in terms of, you know, how could you not notice this place um, in the mountains? Uh, you can't help but notice um, the uh, jungle, I mean the forest. How can you not notice it? They will likely come from the air. Jacob is assembling fighters in the upper rooms to draw their attention there. The children and those two you have the fight will be safe the most of the similar stuff from the first game but it's just presented in a different way so okay having jesus <laughs> having jesus in the game uh so the leader of this people who live in this forest which makes no sense um he's basically jesus he he he, he, he can't be killed he's a he's a mortal he's jesus literally jesus so you have magical jesus here and you have Lara, who's, I suppose, they haven't fully gone the direction they go with the next one yet. So it's only a little bit pervading the waters, which is that everything is her fault. But that's not quite so big in this case. But, you know, the evil guys wouldn't attack this village of innocent people if it wasn't for Lara bringing them towards the area. But it's not... So I'll talk about it in the next game. But the next game, it's putrid in that regard. But this one's okay, it's bearable. So 
So yeah, this is the hidden village that everyone was looking for, which makes no sense why they couldn't find it. Uh, magic. Again, magic. Lots of climbing ch challenges. A lot of the progression is, you know, you know, traversal through the world and all that sort of stuff. And it's good. I think, um, you know, it's another... It, it keeps going. It elevates a little bit, you know, in the the epicness of your climbing and the danger and that sort of stuff. And to the ship under the... in the ice. And there's lots of really cool stuff. And then you get to the last third of the game. And it's, you know, it's very magical and strange and the enemy things and it's... It's a bit ridiculous. So we lose all of the grounded. Everything that grounded the first game is, for most of it, is the, is gone. <laughs> so you just, it's kind of like, ah. Oh. So you just don't talk about it. So Lara just doesn't talk about it. She just does not confront magical things at all, really. She just sort of shuts her mouth and goes, and moves on. So she's, she's happy to be grounded in a real world, but as soon as there's magic, she just shuts up. <laughs> so it's like, well. But you know, apart from just going, oh my goodness. But it's, it's like, so she's older in this, she's, you know, had to, they changed her face a little bit to say she's older. Uh, one of the other things I will mention, you know, her character develops, again, it's developing in a strange direction, which I, I'm going to talk about more in the third one, but not so much as she's still with other teammates. Yep, Far Cry action there. She still has the some of the teammates from the original, and one of them in particular, and they're still with her. So she still has people with her that she's sort of relying on, but they're not really. There's the evil organization that you're battling against as usual. Nothing too crazy there. It's pretty... I suppose it's probably the other part of the game that's quite average, is the bad guys are not particularly memorable. The first one, the leader of the bad guys was pretty... He was sort of memorable. But it was... Again, the mythos, I suppose, was important there. But it kind of the way that the mythos doesn't integrate with the bad guys. It sort of... It clashes with them. As well as you. I think is where this game probably... That's where it loses its... Rating in my mind. Is it's an 8 out of 10. So it drops from the 9 from the first one. And it goes to 8. And it's kind of... It's like you can see the seams a bit more. You start to see... Hmm... But yeah, there's still lots of good content in this game. I think still the content still has is still valid. Exploring and solving puzzles and moving way through and progressing the story and getting cold when it's raining. It might just be that they made her slightly uglier. Maybe that offends me. That she doesn't she's not super duper mega Omega pretty or something. Maybe just the way that the hair is done. The hair is pretty... Um, hair was a big challenge in the first one. So I didn't talk about it too much because, again, it's not that big a deal. But it's something that sort of pervades through their art design is the hair being a bit... I don't know, somewhat odd. I mean, the pants are a bit, a bit odd. But yeah, the other... Oh, I was going to mention that. There is pay to win in this. <laughs> yeah, there's pay to win. I'll show you. Um, so we got, I'll just go back to the menu. I won't talk too much longer, but I just want to mention the pay to win. Um, but yeah, so it's like a, it's a good continuation. Um, maybe Lara's development, it's going in a strange direction, which again, sort of revealed in the next one. But you have, uh, a shop, for some reason, and you can get these. So you get these cards. These for the expeditions. This is just exhibition stuff, so it's not that big a deal. But it's, um... What gifts have I got? So, I don't... Yeah. Open the gift! So, I really don't give a shit about the credits and the thing. I mean, it's not a big deal. You've got, um, easier things. It's just for this expedition mode, which is just, you know, it's not a big deal, honestly. It's not... Nothing special. I wouldn't recommend, you know, even playing it. Don't even think about it. Um, so we've got Lara's Nightmare, the story, Blood Tides. We've got this couple of expansion things, which again, this is the 
20th century 20th year anniversary edition thing so you know it was available on playstation plus for free but um do i recommend it as like a must play compared to the first one no but if you enjoy the first one i think you'll enjoy the second one so let's let's go back yeah you will enjoy it i think it's yeah it doesn't have no it's fine it's just the mythical the mystical magical mythological elements towards the end are a bit largely irrelevant but not irrelevant it's kind of like it's kind of weird it's jarring it doesn't it doesn't sit right with me it never has i just sort of i get a bit ah uh, you know it's a bit uh, why do they and the whole uh jacob who's the leader of this dude's being jesus thing it's just like why why is why did you have to have jesus here you know why was jesus in this game it's it's quite strange i'm gonna just grab some arrows yeah i don't understand why they included jesus Um, climbing and that's all pretty normal. It's not like parkour, parkour. You know, where you can climb any surface. It's not that sort of game. It's not... I suppose Assassin's Creed is pretty basic like that. Ooh. Uh, your health bar is like a count at the top, so you don't have a healing thing. It's just slow regens, for the most part. Uh, you have your skill tree and all that. Um, can I show you my skill tree? That'd be a good idea. Oh, come on. Oh, I've got resources. I'll get to the camper. So it has the same campfire system. And you have the same skill type system. Sim similar type skill system. Again, all the skills are, you know, relevant. They're all helping. Not all of them, but most of them are quite helpful. I just don't want Jacob talking. Don't talk, Jacob. Don't talk. For some reason, these people are like old style, but they've got like new clothes. So, what do you think? What do you think? It's got, it's got straps and things and boots. Perfect boots. Okay, so here we go. So, we have the campfire system still, which is good. I think that's good. Um, so, we have a skill tree, the same. Division again, the Brawler Hunter Survivor skill tree. And then you've got, you know, your weapons, upgrades, and all that sort of stuff. Which is slightly different, but not massive. Not massively different, really. Uh, and I just want to check you for travel. Okay. I could take. I'll go back to the snow just to show you. This is probably a good spot. Yeah, that's fine. So you still have fast travel camp to camp, which again in the story doesn't really make any sense whatsoever. <laughs> How hard it was to get from there to there. So there's a couple open areas where you've got, you know, choices and side sort of missions. They introduce really side missions in this. More, yeah, definitely. Because all the other ones in the first game were all necessary. And as you move around, but this is much more. They just started adding side missions, which I think maybe... Adding the side missions was the wrong decision. I think that's, yeah, undeniable. Totally unnecessary. So this is kind of where things started slipping off the uh, the rails. Now there's bad guys there. I don't want to fight them because they'll be pain in the ass. Oh no, 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 we should fight them, shouldn't we? So it's pretty basic cover. Fire in the hole. Ah. And then you've got searching bodies and all that sort of stuff. So the combat hasn't really, it doesn't really change. There's more weapon variety, but. But no, I can't say it's really gotten I mean, it's slightly more sharpened. You still got your same dodge mechanic. 
We got the roll and that. Double tap. The roll. Hold the roll. It's still Bambi. Honestly, there's a lot of pointless busy work. If I think what they should have learned from the first game was that you can just have the story be the big driver and you can have your cutscenes and your character's emotional state be a really pressy and concern at all the times. You know, you really that's what grounds the the player into the story is that they feel that connection with the character and their movement through the world. But this one they just added a bit more fluff. I don't know if they felt the first one was too short, which I don't know where they can, you know, it just, there's a bit more fluff and it's sort of, oh, when I get to the third game, I'll expand, but it's, you can kind of feel there's a, there's a movement, there's a direction change. And now if this is because of other open world games, maybe, and maybe that's, they've stopped looking at Uncharted and they've looked towards grindy open world type games. Ooh. Brainwave. Ah, I'll move ahead and show you the next sort of open area. Ah, copy milli out a shit spot. I hate that. Ah, uh, the inst installation V is Vista. Ah, uh, that's probably too low. Sheltered Ridge. Sheltered Ridge. So the next area is kind of like a... There's a camp um, that's connected to it and you go through that for the story. And it's, I mean, they're not really, they're not beautiful. And even the forest is pretty, uh. so it's not like it's a beautiful game from that point of view. The ice, if you like the contrast between the forest, the green forest and the snow thing, of course, that looks great. But otherwise it's not so. And the store itself, so this is the Soviet installation. So it's a lot more open world sort of sections or bigger sections that have, you know, hidden things and collect stuff and all that sort of typical open world jargon. And you got your wolves and, and all those sort of enemies and stuff. But it doesn't feel like, I don't know, I don't feel, it's not an appealing open world. And it's good the first time you play, because, you know, you still have the story progress. But then after that, uh, you never come back. Uh, let's go to the Pantheon Corridor. That's a great spot. Yeah, so I'm just showing a little bit of the sites, but I'm not going to talk... I just don't want to focus on the last third of the game. It's like, it is it's, it is the problem, but it's... I don't know. It's just I don't want to think about it. I actively want to avoid thinking about it. So here we have the Abandoned Mines. So this is kind of a... So, so we've got a lot of this weird, you know, the floor just goes on forever, kind of bullshit. I don't go over there. I don't go over there. But yeah, you have some great sets in the under, in the under ice sort of depths in the ravines here, the ancient civilization and all that sort of stuff. And they look good, you know, but. But then they're all good. Alright, let's get back. Where's the geothermal valley's somewhat palpable, but it's got all these weird people in it. But yeah, what was your experience of the game? I want, you know, people to comment. What do they think? They think Rise of the Tomb Raider was a, a bigger drop off? Or was the same? Or they didn't notice a difference? They noticed the grind, maybe. Maybe you noticed the grind and went, oh, wait a second. There's a bit more grind in this one. I wonder why. <sighs> I'm going to get away from these people so the music doesn't play. No music. Sick of it. Ah, uh, the music in this isn't as good. It just isn't. It's, it, I mean, it's not offensive or anything. It's not unpalpable, unpalpable to the ears, but it's just not. It's just the in the first game it hit different, yet, and it had a lot more to do with, you know, with Lara, really, and just that, you know, as she was young and the challenge and everything it was a bit more. 
the, the character development and the story was more impactful than this one. This one is because of Jesus and his invisibility. It's kind of like a... And the magical the magical thing with the magical... Oh my... And the magic... Uh, <laughs> yeah, so it's a... Definitely a difference in magnitude of personal feeling. But, you know, it's supposed to be grander because you've got the big army dudes and the bad guys coming in and then... But then it sort of just goes from big to small. And then suddenly you're still doing the final boss fight against the dude. And then the magical stuff doesn't really mean anything. And it's just kind of... It's kind of... It's weird. The way it's structured. And I think that the first game got the balance a little bit better. Even if it was still strange. The, the conclusion. But in this they get the balance all... Oh whack. Stupid helicopter. But yeah, so... This is my opinion. That's pretty obvious. If you think I'm wrong. More than happy to hear it in the comments. <laughs> but yeah, 8 out of 10, I think, still being very generous. That just says a lot about, you know, the high from the previous one. And I did enjoy it and play through it. And... Stupid Trinity. Evil organization full of evil people. Yeah, with no names. And again, more anonymous henchmen for you to kill. With whom mean nothing. Their lives mean nothing. And these other people here, their lives mean nothing. Should have introduced them. In the line. So important if you can have characters, you know, live and die and all that. It's bloody giving names. Make them matter. Oh, missed it. I'll reach it this one. Uh, you still have the gory death animations, just not as big. It's just not as big an imp of a, a thing as the first one, which is just especially um, known for it, and the second one, not so much. It is still there, but it's just not. It's not as prescient in my mind, and am I recalling the game and my experiences in it? Oh, I should. Um, no, it's fine. I was going to show you the terrible outfits. Okay, I will. I will show you the last episode. Okay, so yeah, this has been Frosty Fire 10. Like and subscribe. I'm just going to show some. Can I change them at any time, or is it. Do I have to go back to the stupid campfire? Uh. No, I have to go back. Stupid, stupid. Run! But yeah, I don't. Now that I've done it, I just, I just, I can't recommend playing the game twice, I think is the point I'll make. This one in particular. The first one, yeah, you can play that multiple times, I think that's not a problem. But this, this one I just, the second time is just a chore. In games that feel like they're a chore, that's not a good thing. That is a terrible thing. But, you know, sometimes it's okay if it's fun enough. But... Right, come on, do I have different outfits? Inventory. No. Oh yeah, so you got equipment to craft as well in this in the hunter's equipment and all that stuff. That's fine. How the heck do I change outfit? Oh there it is. Okay, so we got a bunch of different outfits. I'm gonna show them all. Let's do a fashion thing. So we got ancient vanguard. So she's like got armor. But yeah, there's something about her face that's off. Uh Shadow Runner. So some of these have bonuses, so you get them all if you buy the 20th century, the anniversary edition thing, and all of that's all gone anyway. There used to be a difference in the which version of the game you got, whether you got the outfits or not. It's different now though. So we've got a leather jacket. So this is what you. This is the default one. Now fashion matters. I, I, I'll say that it does matter. Oh, how much longer are I? Okay, almost done. I'll get through it. I'll show you the blue Henley. I think the blue Henley's the best. And there's literally no comparison to the others. Grey Henley, similar? But no, I think blue's better. The whiteout jacket. you just heavy duty. Expedition jacket. Red. It doesn't look too bad, to be honest. Spirit Weaver. We got the pioneer. That is awful. 
the Valiant Explorer. You got this really weird one, the rag skin. I mean, it, you know. I don't know. Reimagine Antarctica outfit. That's that's not terrible. But I just like the blue one the best. And you can make up your mind as to why. Oh uh, yeah, so this has been a review. Rise of the Tomb Raider. Uh, eight out of ten. Oh, it's a great it's a great game. I don't think there's it's not gonna be too unfair. I'm to be being hypercritical because I'm leading into the next video. So it's like the next video and the final game is like But um this one is still you know it's still a really good game i really enjoyed it the first time i played through it great for if you've never played it before highly recommend if you have played it before then i can't ever recommend you play it again there's really no ground for that but yeah her face is weird you see it you see what i see it's about the is it the cheeks or is it the cheekbones is it the mouth something about it's off just in terms of the you know connecting to the first game I feel like it's different. It's just age, man. It's just age. No. Something off. Something odd. So, yeah. Uh, I'll see you next time for the final... The final installment in this review trilogy. <laughs> of a trilogy. Um, yeah. So, if you like the game a lot... Like, I, I still love the game. Jesus. I still like the game a lot. But, yeah. If you liked it too, give it a like. If you dislike the game and you think the game is crap and you just quit after five minutes. Okay. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, I doubt there's many like that. So yeah. That'll do. And I'll see you next time. Peace and chicken grease. Bye bye.